Hey, I'm Andy. Welcome to Aquatic Images. Today I'm going to review the X Adventurer M15000 underwater video lights. I recently went on a liveaboard trip to the Similan Islands in Thailand and just as I was getting ready to leave, this company called ProDive Imaging, which is based out of Bangkok, contacted me and asked if I wanted to borrow and check out these video lights. So I just want to give them a big thanks. This video is not sponsored by them, but this is a great company if you do want to get any kind of underwater video gear in Thailand. So first of all, let me just talk a little bit about the video gear that I've used for this review. The camera I use is the Panasonic GH5 and I use it with two lenses, the Tokina 11-16mm 2.8 for wide and the Sigma 18-35 for kind of a normal kind of zoom range. Uh, both of these lenses are adapted to the GH5 using the Metabone Speed Booster adapter. Also, I use the Kelvin Spectrum filters. I use the SF2 filter, which is the one that is ranged from about 4 to 18 meters. And I'm going to do a full review on that filter as well. But it's kind of the perfect combo with this light, and I'll show you why in a sec. So let's talk about the specs. As the name suggests, this video light has a output of 15,000 lumens. It also has a CRI rating of 96 and a Kelvin temperature of 5600. The battery life is pretty good and it allows you to run the light at full power for up to 50 minutes. But of course, if you dim the lights down, you get longer burn time. The price depends a little bit on where you are in the world, but they tend to go for around the 800 US dollar mark. This puts them cheaper than most of their competitors at the same output level. So you might think that because they're cheaper, then there would be some issues with things like build quality. Well, I've only had them for a few days, but I can tell you that the build quality straight off the box seems really, really solid. The body is made out of aluminum and the battery compartment is separate from the rest of the lights, meaning that if you should be unfortunate and get a flood in the battery compartment, it doesn't affect the most expensive part, which is the light itself. The battery compartment has double O-rings, which is what you can expect from any video light these days. The layout and functionality of this light is super easy and, well, there's one button. The one button turns the light on and off and it also controls the output level. So it's fairly easy to use these lights. Now, some of the things that I find interesting with the light, especially at this price point, is the extras that you can get for it. So there's two things I wanna to talk to you about. First of all, let's start with a positive, which is the remote. Now, I haven't had a chance to test this myself. They didn't send me a remote for testing, but essentially what it allows you to do is to have one remote fixed on the center of your housing, which then controls the output levels of both lights that could be mounted much further apart. This just makes life so much easier when it comes to turning your lights on and off and adjusting your output instead of having to reach all the time and adjust them separately. The second thing is the blue filters or the ambient light filters. And sadly, this was kind of a big disappointment to me. This was the part that I looked forward to the most because of the way that they team up with very good red filters. So just in case you don't know how this works, if you put a red filter on a camera, then basically that gives you better color even on objects that are further away. But if you would to add normal video lights to that mix, then what happens is you're adding a different color temperature into it and the um, area of the image where the light reach will just be far too red or orange. However, with the ambient light filters on, basically what happens is you're converting that output light into a similar light source as the sunlight, meaning that it kind of becomes more of a fill light 
um, and it just gives you a much nicer and more natural looking image. So this is kind of like the dream combination. The problem, sadly, is that these filters um, that I got cut a lot of lights. So when you have a video light with an output of 15,000 lumens, I could be wrong, but it felt to me like it was cutting more than 50% of the output. And uh, it just resulted in, I was hoping the video light would be able to be used on subjects that was quite far away, but unless things were a couple of meters away, they were pretty much unusable. If you're planning to use these lights without the ambient light filters, then I think you'll be okay. The 15,000 lumen output is plenty bright for most situations that you will encounter filming and the CRI rating of 96 means that you have a very nice and even looking light. So my final thoughts on this light is that it's a very, very well made and high quality product and it's very, very good for the price. I mean, $800 for a 15,000 lumen output light with a very high CRI rating was unthinkable just a few years back. So if you're going to get a video light and you're looking for something in this price point and something with a good output, I would highly recommend getting the X Adventure light. But hopefully in the future, they'll be able to create filters that take out less of the output, or maybe we just have to get used to the loss of output and we have to wait for brighter lights to come out. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciated you sticking around to the end. Please uh, like the video if you can, and also remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.